Hey there YouTube, Arbana69 here and I've got a 3D printing video for you today. Now today's video is going to look at problems I've come across while 3D printing and hopefully help prevent the same problems with your 3D prints. Now first thing I want to get off my chest is a myth I often hear about 3D printing is that you can get a file, put it on your PC, drop it to the printer and you get a full functioning working part straight away. It's not the case. You download the file, yes, of Thingiverse, the files are free. Pop it into your software, and then you need to tweak the settings. Make sure it's going to print properly. Make sure the layer heights are right, etc. There's a lot of settings to change, and it takes a bit of time. This does get quicker and quicker with experience, but it takes time. Next, you need to save it to the file, put it on the printer. It's not a quick process to 3D print files. They take hours, and the finished product is not perfect. You can get blobs, you can get bits, you can get marks on the print, you can get Z judder which causes line separation. There are hundreds of problems. If you want a professional finished piece, it takes time to sand it, fill it, prime it, paint it. There's a lot of steps to involved in 3D printing. So with that out of the way, let's move on. The first thing I want to look at regarding the printing process is the settings within the software. Now the software I use is Simplify 3D. I've bought the license for it, I enjoy the software, it prints well, I'm now used to using it. So we'll be looking at uh, Simplify 3D in these examples. So let's hop on over and have a look. So here we are in Simplify 3D. Now the model I've got loaded at the moment is a PSV to stand. This is by somebody else, this is not my design, so the links will be down in the description below for this model if you want to get it yourself. Now, looking at this model, past experience has told me that screw holes do not print very well on sparse infill. Now, as we can see here, we have two screw holes. So, immediately what I need to do is either increase the infill through the whole model, which will take time to print, or split the print into two separate processes and put an infill layer in the middle right below where these screw holes are so these print on a solid surface which is the option I've gone for as you can see I've got two processes. Now then getting to the problems. Often I have done this in the past not checked my settings carefully, saved the file, put it on the printer, come back an hour later and find I've got a garbage print at the end of it. It's wasted time and it's wasted filament. So what I stress is please spend the time check your settings. It's laborious, it's a pain in the ass, it wastes a bit of time, but it saves hours in the end. So let's see what we're talking about. We'll have a look at process one. So this is the first part of the print. Now, as I said, we're splitting the print into two parts. So ultimately, we're gonna have a solid infill before these holes start to print. So the first thing I needed to do was to work out how far up them holes are the model, which I've already done. And I've worked out I need to stop the first print at 2.4 millimeters. Now, first setting is the layers. I always do eight solid layers on the bottom. I find this gives me a better print. Now, what I've done here is I normally do eight top layers as well. But because we'll be splitting this, I've done two top solid layers on here and then six bottom solid layers on the next print. So you have this one printing two layers. When the next print starts, it prints six layers and then continues on with the print. The next thing to check is cooling is set correctly. At this point, I don't want any cooling running, so that's fine. As I said before, we've got this set to stop printing at 2.4, and we've got the infill at 10%. So what we need to do is check process two to make sure this starts printing at 2.4 millimeters. We'll check the layers. We've got six bottom layers. We don't want eight bottom layers because we've already got two from the previous on the top. So that would give us eight plus two would be 10, and that's too many layers and it starts to take time for the printing process. So it's all about working out where one finishes and the next starts. So that's fine. We've got the cooling set to come on at layer 10 on this print. So that will be fine. And we've got the infill at 10%. So next we need to look at the print preview, select all processes, and just double check we have things set correctly. So if we wind the print back, here we go. So we have the uh, bottom layers printing, then we have the 10% infill, and here we go. So we have one, two top layers of the previous process, and then one, two, three, four, five, six layers of the bottom of the next process. And then immediately we start with 
the infill but as you can see here it started to put down the start of the holes that we're going to be printing and as these build up they are building on top of solid layers not in thin air and as the print across they work out fine here we are this is the exit part of the holes printing now experience has told me that because this is such a small distance this will cope printing over the, uh, the sparse infill and we continue on they print perfectly fine And then as we get to the top, oops, too far, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight top layers and the print's finished. So because we took the time to check, we know the holes are going to be printing on the solid layers, so that's fine. We know they're going to succeed. We've checked the print looks fine on the print preview. We know we're going to get a good print. That should be good to go. So that's one thing we've looked at. The second thing I want to stress is that you check the print preview carefully. The reason for this is I've printed simple models that are very, very basic, don't require much settings change. I haven't paid attention to the print preview because I've just assumed they will be fine to print. They weren't. Now we'll jump back into Simplify 3D and I'll show you the models I was talking about. Right, here we are back in Simplify 3D and this is the piece I was talking about. It's very basic. It's not complex, doesn't require a lot of change in settings. I assumed this would print first time perfectly and I was mistaken. Now, one of the first things to double check is I had two processes, I removed one. What I forgot to check was the start and end print times. I hadn't changed them, so I needed to uncheck that. The other thing, I didn't check the cooling. Now, it's not so much important on this one, but if you are going from multiple processes back to one, double check where your cooling starts again because some prints do need it, others don't, but double check it. Also, I forgot to check layers. I needed to change this back to eight for the top solid layers, so there we go. That was my first mistake. My second mistake was I hit prepare to print, I saved a disk, I walked away and I started printing. I didn't pay attention to the skirt. As you can see here, let's move it up a little bit. The skirt doesn't go around the whole part, it only covers this small front, which means this back part doesn't start printing on the base of the print bed. And if we have a look, there we go, that's on the print bed, that looks like it's on the print bed, all this yellow as you can see is bridge material, it's going to print in thin air. And there you go, you can just to say see there's a gap underneath the whole print here. There is only this small front that sits on the print bed. So what I should have done is open the model up and change the Z offset oops, by 0.5 just to drop it down onto the print bed a bit more. That should be minus 0.5 And now the skirt goes all the way around. If we look underneath, that's at a solid layer now. And that will print successfully. So let's have a look at some examples of this print, printed both the original way, while the skirt only covered with a small section, and with the print fully dropped onto the print bed. So here you can see the parts that were printed. This one was printed as the original file with just the front part of it connected to the print bed. As you can see, the rest of this is quite a mess. This is the one that was printed um, after I checked all the settings, which I should have done in the first place. And you can see the bottom is a smoother print. So let's take a closer look at this one. So there, as you can see, this is a complete mess. It didn't print properly, it didn't connect, and up in the corners here, we've got some bending, some lifting. The whole print was completely ruined. While the top part looks fine, apart from the, uh, the gap in the centre because I didn't do the top layers correctly. The bottom part is a complete mess. So let's have a look at the other one. There we are, as you can see, it's a nice smooth base, everything printed correctly, and on the top, we corrected the top layers, everything printed fine. So admittedly, this isn't a very big piece, so it didn't waste too much plastic, 
but again, I didn't pay attention. This is also the case for another file. Again, I didn't pay attention to the settings, as you can see. The bottom part of this hasn't printed very well. All this back shiny bit was attached to the print bed. This was 0.5 millimeters above the print bed, so it didn't print very well. This is the print after I corrected my mistake. Again, you'd think I'd learned the first time around. And it printed a lot better, so let's take a closer look at this one. So there you go, as you can see, this is a complete mess. It was 0.5 millimeters off the base. You can see the solid line running right across here where it uh, finished the first layer and this as I said was 0.5 millimeters above the print bed it had nothing to connect to it did its best but it wasn't very good um, the top of the model is not great either uh, the settings weren't quite correct so let's have a look at the corrected version as you can see this is much better the bottom layer is all solid the bottom part printed correctly is attached to the print bed base and some settings were changed for the top layers and this printed a lot better as well. So as you can see a side by side up close comparison there is a big difference. And one more model to look at. Again I wasn't paying attention and the front part of this one here where the teardrop shape is wasn't attached to the print bed and as you can see it's curled at the very end here and the very bottom of the print wasn't attached to the print bed so it couldn't print correctly and it's a bit of a mess. While the top looks fine because both sides of the print will be visible on the final model it was essential this was perfect and here we have it printed again correctly with all settings checked. Now all those examples I've just shown you, none of them have been cleaned up, none of them have been sanded, etc. They're all as they came off the print bed. Now none of those files are my own, they were from a project I'm working on, and again the link is in the description for that. If you want to check it out, it's on Thingiverse. So yes, when printing a file that looks simple, please pay attention to the print preview, as it will save you time and it will save you filament. Now the last thing I want to talk about is support structure within 3D printing. Now my experience of support structure and for what I found on the internet is when you use support structures and the print touches it, it has a slightly rougher finish. So you need to bear this in mind when designing your models or putting support structure in. Bear in mind which parts will be visible, which parts won't and try to factor that in when using support structures. Now I've got an example coming up that I was using. Again, it's from the same model I was looking at last time. So we'll jump in to Simplify 3D and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here we are again back in Simplify 3D and this is the part I was talking about. Now what I didn't pay attention to and what I wasn't really um, concentrating on was which part of the model will be visible, how much of it will be visible and what needs to connect to what. Now the way it works is the underside here sits inside another part of the model. This is the visible side. So when I originally did this I opened up support structures and did generate support and it plopped all the support underneath here. So I went ahead, hit done, prepare to print and printed this so as you can see here we go. There's the support structure and as the print goes on it builds up on the base and then the walls print and while it printed fine it did its job it didn't look very pretty on the underside. Once I'd realised my mistake, I went back, removed existing supports, here we go, and then I flipped the model so this part was touching the base. There we go, and again generate auto supports. So we've now got support structure underneath. Now with 3D printing the last few layers these will be um, smooth, these will print perfectly fine. Underside in here on the top of the support material will be slightly rougher. So if you have a look in the print preview there we can see the support material building and here we go there's the bridge material that sits on top of the supports and the rest of the model prints fine. Now what we'll do is we'll have a look at the prints I made of both of these and you can see exactly how they turned out.
So here are both prints. Now I've already removed all the support material from this one because it was mainly stuck to the print bed whereas this one I've only part removed the support material to show you. So let's take a closer look at this one where the support material was on this side of the print here. So here we can see this is a very very rough edge working down to here that is very very bad as you can see the filament didn't sit properly and this is what I was talking about the edges that touch support material don't print exceptionally well and tend to have rough edges now this sits inside another piece that way around and as you can see it's very very visible around here and especially here there you go that it wasn't a very good print the other thing I found because this whoops because this is not a very good surface it didn't sit inside the other model very well so now let's have a closer look at the other piece that I changed so as you can see the support material is still intact on some of this now this part you can just about make out it's a bit rough let's see if we can get a better shot there we are it's a bit rough on the inside here that can be sanded quite easily and it won't look too bad the main part is here this is smooth printed very very well and sits inside the other model perfectly so this is why I was saying pay attention to how your model will connect to other pieces which part needs to be perfect finish which part can be slightly sacrificed if you have to use support material oops it's alive this piece so as I said, this part will sit inside the model. While this is visible, this is partly covered by another piece, so it won't be very visible at all. So this is why I say, pay attention to your support material and how the model fits with other pieces and what can be slightly sacrificed. Now the last point I want to cover is paying attention to your prints while they're printing. Now it's essential to make sure you watch the print for the first layer or so to make sure you get a good first layer as this is key to all prints. After that you tend to leave your printer alone checking back every half hour to hour. The reason I say this is because sometimes prints just don't go to plan. You've checked your settings, you've checked the print preview, everything looks fine but for some reason it doesn't print. Now this happened to me recently on a model I was printing for my printer. Let's have a look and see what I'm talking about. Right. This is the part I'm talking about. Again, this isn't my file. I didn't create this. Links will be in the description down below. But this is a tube holder for my 3D printer. Now, there's been no cleanup work done on this whatsoever. This is literally how it came off the print. But this wasn't the first print. This is what printed first. It's not a complete model. Now, I was using a very, very dense infill because I wanted some strength in this print. But as you can see here, there's a blob. Now, what I didn't do was I didn't keep checking uh, progress on my print. I left it alone, came back after about two hours and found the print head stopped and embedded into the actual print itself, causing this uh, buildup of plastic on the model. So what I did was turn the print off, let it cool down, reset it all up and start the print again. This time keeping an eye on the actual print. As you can see, it stopped at pretty much exactly the same layer. There was a small divot here where the print head stopped. This time I was watching it and I saw the print head stop. Nothing seemed to be malfunctioning, nothing seemed to be deformed, everything seemed to be perfectly fine. Now this is nothing wrong with the actual model, nothing wrong with the software, something went wrong during the slicing process, serving the file to SD card. It's one of those things that can happen. I don't know why it occurred. It's probably a glitch. Something interrupted the file when it was writing to the SD card and caused corruption in the uh, G code. So I went back to the slicing software, loaded the model up again, exactly the same settings, changed nothing, erased the SD card, saved the file again, ran the print and came back to check at roughly this point in the print again. And that's when we ended up with this model here. The whole thing printed successfully. Didn't glitch, didn't stop. It was a perfect print all the way to the top layer. So there we are. That is a prime example of keeping an eye on your prints to make sure the print successfully. It was nothing to do, like I said, with the model, etc. This was purely a problem with the G-code. So the rule is, every half hour to hour of a large print, just pop up, check on your printer, make sure it's going smoothly.
and hopefully you will end up with a successful print. So there we are, those are the issues I've come across in 3D printing. I hope you find some of these issues interesting and I hope they've helped solve problems you've had with 3D prints in the past. Like I said, not everything is down to a problem with the settings of your printer etc. It can be purely down to a problem with slicing the model and the G-code itself. Do me a favour, if you found the video interesting or you found it of some use, please give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, but leave some details below and let me know what you thought. And also, if you can smack that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel, it helps out immensely. Until next time, happy 3D printing.